Let's face it, most of us are pretty average at the game. It's not like we can push every player we see in arena lobby and get away with it. Only the pros can do that. Instead, we need to pick and choose our fights when we have an advantage. By focusing on taking engagements where you have an edge, you can quickly up the rate in which you win your fights and your matches. What's going on guys? I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It's Superman Dan, and in this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about selecting engagements, when to take fights. The outcomes of most fights are usually decided on a few circumstances that exist before the fight even starts. Knowing these conditions can help you decide whether an engagement is worth taking or not. Depending on the stage of the match, situations can change, and so does the risk involved with taking fights. So we'll start off by first discussing early game scenarios and then work our way through to the end game. And before we hop right into that, you guys know the drill, visit ProGuides.com for the best of the best coaches. We also added all new trending articles and VOD analysis videos, so don't hesitate, check that out. Hammer that like button and let's dive right in. Okay, let's start off with the early game. The start of the match can often be the hardest part, plagued by heavy loot RNG and third parties, so you've got to be smart with how you approach fights. By assessing a few factors, you can then decide whether or not you should take a fight. The first factor is your resources. From the moment you land, this can come into play. For instance, if you manage a great landing and can get a rifle before your opponents finish their drop, why not lay in a few rounds? You might pick up a kill, but beyond that point, as you open chests and loot up, you need to be paying attention to the loot differential. This is the difference between your loot and your opponents. Obviously, you can't see exactly what everyone else has looted, but if you play the game enough, you can have a good idea just based on how quickly you're finishing your loadout. If you get a blue pump, some shields, and attack SMG in your first house, you can bet that your opponent next door hasn't found the same. And we all know how good those items are in a fight, but if you only get a gray AK and no shields, you should keep trying to loot, as I'm sure we all know, fighting wouldn't work out too well. The second thing you need to pay attention to is the safe zone location. This doesn't come into play right away, but once it's revealed, you should always check to see how far you need to run. This is especially important if you land on the edges of the map, since you'll probably need to run a longer distance. If the safe zone is really far away, sometimes you'll just be better off if you don't take any fights. You need to think about the long term for the match. Even if you do get a kill, dying to the storm because you rotated too late is a bad outcome. It's still definitely possible to play aggressively with a bad zone, but the time you have to engage shrinks rapidly as the storm approaches. Third, you need to always consider your positioning. Being able to strike from an unknown or advantageous position can instantly give you the upper hand in a fight. The best way to do this is by hiding behind natural cover. Rooftops are especially great for this since they give you the high ground advantage and a great view of the area. However, you need a really good awareness of your opponent's position. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting a bunch of time waiting for them to walk into your view that you could have spent looting and gathering materials. Lastly, the number of players in your landing spot makes a massive difference in how you approach fights. Third partying is huge at the start of the game. Players will immediately jump at any opportunity to get easy kills, and so being the first one to initiate a fight can often end in tragedy. By waiting patiently for your opponents to start battling and making yourself the third party, you can be the one that swoops in and gets the easy cleanup. As always though, if you know there are more players in your area, be cautious after a kill, as they'll likely be on their way to fight you. Just take a look at this clip from Benji Fishy. He notices a fight, so he builds up onto the roof and waits for his opening. The first player doesn't even notice him, which allows Benji to get in a nice chunk of damage. The second player interjects and tries to stop Benji from stealing his kill, but with a quick edit, Benji secures it. He spends some more time fighting this second player and would have probably gotten the elim, but instead the zombies end up stealing the kill from Benji. Then as he tries to run away from the horde chasing him, another third party. Benji does his best to tunnel away and lose his opponent, but this guy just doesn't let off. Eventually, Benji's run out of mats, so he goes for a play, but ends up falling to none other than his trio's partner, Mitro. Wow, third partying sure played a part in a lot of those eliminations there. So, to summarize, your resources, the safe zone location, positioning, and third party potential are what you need to consider during the early game. If you can take the time to assess all four of these factors instead of rushing into each engagement, you will start to have an easier time winning your drop spot. Now, onto the mid game. A lot of the same rules from the early game apply here, but there are also a few extra precautions that you need to take. Taking fights during the mid game is generally one of the riskiest things that you can do. Players usually make it to this point with shields, a full loadout, and max materials, so most fights you get into here have the potential of going to their limit, at which point it can be hard to recover from losing a bunch of materials or taking too much damage during the fight. Because even if you win the battle, you still have to think about how you're going to have a successful end game. As the map shrinks and resources run dry, you don't want to run low going into the late game. It'll put you in a sticky situation and you'll lose out on any positioning advantage you could have otherwise gained. 
It's also third-party central. Players are thirsty to get in on any action they see, so you've got to worry about that as well if you initiate a fight. But the main thing you need to think about is making it to the end game. That's where a majority of the points are earned through placements, and in any decent lobby, you haven't reached placement points just yet. One time taking fights during the mid-game can be worth it is if you have no mobility. In most cases, it's not too hard to find a launch pad or some shockwaves in your starting zone, but sometimes the RNG can be cruel. And if you want to have a strong endgame where you don't run out of mats and die, having mobility items is a must. So by forcing and winning a fight, you just might be able to pick up a launch pad or some shockwaves. You can also choose to third-party situations if you feel like it. You should always keep an eye on the zone, though. If it's still really far, you've got to be careful committing. But by taking third-party fights, there's a good chance you can walk away with the loot of a couple players. One tip for engaging in third parties is to see if you can take your time to get in closer before revealing that you've joined in. That way, you'll be in a more effective range and have a better chance of securing the kill. Should you get engaged on at some point, like when you're trying to rotate, you have a couple of options. If the situation isn't looking so hot, you could always pop some mobility to try getting away. Or if you didn't get tagged up too much, you could turn around and take the fight. If you have no mobility, the second option is really all you have since it's pretty hard to lose somebody just by running away. If you're too low to take a ranged fight, try boxing up and waiting for them to come to you. Then you can go for a quick edit or two and land some massive pump shots that'll even the odds. The mid game is generally more passive than others. Other than if you need mobility or you spot a good third party opportunity, fights generally aren't worth taking here. Lastly, we've reached the late game. At this phase of the game, positioning and staying alive matter the most. These small zones are packed with players. Making the wrong move or getting too cocky with your aggression is a sure way to end your game prematurely. Then you'll miss out on all those sweet, sweet placement points. When it comes to finding kills in the end game, you generally want to position first, and then the kills will come to you. The only time you really need to go out of your way and ignore positioning is when you're low on resources. If you happen to get into a scuffle during the mid game, you might need to top up on materials before the zones start shrinking. Picking a target and box fighting them is the fastest way to try and recover during these situations. You won't have to commit too many mats if you box fight. And if you can mechanically outplay them or catch them off guard, the loot you get should be enough to get you ready for the moving zones. In terms of what makes good positioning during the endgame, getting as close as possible to the safe zone can contribute a ton in helping you find kills. If you can get ahead of the pack, either with some quick tunneling, good RNG, or mobility usage, you should set up some build and start looking for elims on the players rotating in. Edit your walls, your cones, or whatever pieces you need to find those kills. If the storm is starting to catch up, consider not waiting until the last second to move. You don't want to fall behind, and you definitely don't want to give up your spot holding other players in the storm. If you have the materials and no one is contesting you, try to establish high ground on your rotates as well. If the zone is small enough and you got the mats, you should be able to hold it and ride that high ground train all the way to the end of the match. The only time you might need to drop down is if you start to run out of materials. When you start running out of mats during the endgame, no matter what position you're playing, it's a good idea to force a kill if you can. You can box fight this or just try to find an opening on an unsuspecting player. If they're rotating or preoccupied looking for kills, most players are pretty focused on getting that done and might not even notice you lurking near them. In this example played by Clix, we can definitely see how impactful positioning near the safe zone can be during the endgame. He's already used one shockwave to place himself on the side closest to the safe zone. Now he can look for kills. He sees the player right next to him and goes all in with the wall replace and SMG spray. Before he even reloads his weapons, he shockwaves for a good position. Clix knows it's crucial to get set up ahead of the herd so he can avoid getting held in the storm himself. Once he reloads his weapons, he looks towards the storm for more kills. Another wall replace and Clix gets one more. Then he picks up the shockwave and uses it to position himself close to the safe zone again. This example is just to give you guys an idea of what we mean by positioning close to the safe zone. It's vital if you want to stay alive and be able to look for kills. The shockwaves helped out a ton, but that's exactly what they're best used for. Later on, he makes it to top 3, but ends up losing a fight to Booga. Guess it took one of the best players in the world to end Clix's streak here. Ok guys, so to summarize everything, there's nothing wrong with taking fights during the early game. You just need to make sure that you're trying to take each fight with every edge you can get, whether that's a resource, positioning, or third party advantage. The mid game is a lot more risky to take fights on. You're close to the late game and you can't afford to put yourself in a shaky position right before it comes up. Avoid them if you can, but if you need mats or see a nice third party opportunity, go for it. During the end game, positioning is the top priority. If you can take and hold high ground with either advanced positioning or mobility items, try taking it. It's the best position you can be in, especially in team based modes. If you can't hold high ground or don't want to commit to taking it, playing the mid or low ground is fine. Just focus on getting ahead of the pack so you can look for kills on players rotating in.
Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. It helps us a lot. Also, what do you guys look for before you take a fight? Put it in the comments, and it might just help the rest of the viewers out. All right, guys, if you want to follow me on social, you can find me at, at Daniel Lammerman. And thanks so much for watching. See you guys later.